Okay, we're good to go. All right, welcome everybody. Good morning, good morning. We are um, participating in the Saturday Morning Mastermind this morning, and today we're going to be talking about verse 70 of the Tao Te Ching as interpreted by Wayne Dyer in his book, uh, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, Living the Wisdom of the Tao. And, uh, but before we get going, I want to give everybody an opportunity to introduce themselves. <clears throat> and uh, we'll let you go first, Jason, since you're already unmuted. <laughs> Jump out, everybody. Oh, goodness. I can't even find my camera. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> um, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> um, Hey, it's good to see you all. Looking forward to the discussion, and uh, it's great to see all your smiling faces. And, um, yeah, glad to be back here. Glad to have you. Hi, Jason. This is Christopher Camp from Chicago, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks for joining us. Dan Sissick from sunny Las Vegas, where uh, the thermometer the thermometer is going up, up, up again, and we could just had another cold spell, and it actually got really kind of cool. Um, so, being not far from Colorado, um, them still getting snow and stuff, it's kind of been weird. Where, and I've heard back east, they've been really hot. So, I'm loving it and glad to be here. Hi, I'm Karen Lohoff, and I'm uh, hotter than you, Dan. <laughs> Actually, I guess I guess Las Vegas and uh, Phoenix are often running neck and neck. And no cheery thought that. Looking forward to to this morning. Oh, so good to be back on. Thanks. Bye. Hi, it's Marjorie. It's the morning. Glad to be here, and uh, glad I. I woke up in time, <laughs> so thank you. Morning, it's Catherine in Boulder, Colorado. Awesome, awesome everybody, glad to have you on. And uh, hopefully you can hear us, Catherine. Um, but if not, you'll hear, you'll see when we unmute, <laughs> we're sitting here saying nothing and then you can just jump out. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm glad to have everybody back on this week. It's always so much, uh, more fun when we have multiple people. I mean, not that it isn't fun when it's just a couple of us, but, um, I feel like we learn a lot more when there's more of us to share our experiences and our insights. So, um, okay. So who wants to read the verse this week? I will. Okay. Tao Te Ching, verse 70. My teachings are very easy to understand and very easy to practice. Yet so few in this world understand and so few are able to practice. My words have an ancestor. My deeds have a Lord. The people have no knowledge of this. Therefore, they have no knowledge of me. This is why the sage dresses plainly, even though his or her interior is filled with precious gems. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> you know, when I read the first part of this chapter, um, Wayne says that he read through 50 different interpretations of this verse and meditated on it for a while before he finally decided what he was going to write about it. And I thought that that was really interesting to to kind of have that realization that there are so many different interpretations of the Tao Te Ching. And um, again, another reason why we all get on here and study this together is because we all can have different ideas of what is actually being taught here in these different verses. So um, <clears throat> I just wanted to mention that. But So what was your first impression? Who wants to jump out and share what they thought when they first read this verse? I'll jump out because even for me, just even in reading that first paragraph, the first couple lines, he says, my teachings are very easy to understand and very easy to practice. And as we've learned, even just going through the book ourselves, you know, there's so much we get out of it. But sometimes even when we first read it, all of us, we all kind of say we look at it and we just kind of go, huh? You know, because. 
I think in essence, a lot of what he, he does say is easy, but because of how life is and because of how culture and everything out there has put certain expectations and certain things that we all kind of just run and go with instead of stopping and kind of evaluating that against, you know, like things like this and stuff. Um, we, we make it harder than what it really should be, I think. Okay, now we're just going to sit in silence for 20 minutes. <laughs> that was good, Dan. Yeah. No, I was, I was thinking um, so, some of the things are so open to ter interpretation that, like, um, there's a lot of different thoughts we have on him. But he's, like, pretty clear about stuff, too. So in that sense, it's like some of the things are, are really clear. But he's, it's also like very sophisticated poetry, you know, and so it can, it's open to a lot of interpretation and thought. Hi, it's Marjorie. I was going to say I really loved this when I first read the first line. And I'm looking at it now. Let me go back to where I saved it. And... Um, so, you know, it was sort of inspiration, like, oh, it's easy to understand and easy to practice. It completely contrasts and says the opposite. Yet so few understand and, and so few practice. And that third sentence, you know, my words have an ancestor. My deeds have a Lord. I was thinking the word, his words having an ancestor, all I could think about was like but that what he's writing about is coming from um a past an ancestor meaning he's going back and thinking about maybe other guides or master teachers uh maybe past experiences that that being an ancestor um uh, and so you know, words of wisdom, right? My words have an ancestor. And then he's saying, and my deeds have a Lord. I wasn't really sure what that, that meant. And I still don't really have a grasp on that. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe he feels his deeds, his actions are being inspired by, by a master or by uh a guide, you know, a Lord in that way, a guide, uh, he's being guided to, to act in a good way with, by a Lord or an example or a master. So, and then I guess the rest of it, I was taking that when he says people have no knowledge of this, therefore they have no knowledge of me. I'm wondering if he's talking about people aren't, putting enough effort into, into uh, life, you know, thinking about what his teachings are saying, what his words are saying, and what, what his actions mean, that people are being a little oblivious in, in daily life. Um, and because of that, they have no knowledge of this and no knowledge of me. Um, they're missing out. You know, they're they're um, losing the opportunity to, to, take, to take what he has to share, his words and his actions and his, um, you know, having a chance to understand. And the very, very last one I thought was just really beautiful. Uh, this is why the sage dresses plainly, um, even though his interior is filled with precious gems. That could be anybody. Yes, the sage, the master, is filled with beautiful, precious gems inside, and and he's not looking to to draw attention, and dresses paint plainly because he realizes no one's paying any attention anyway to him because people have no knowledge of of this and they have no knowledge of me. 
So overall, it was a really beautiful verse that really made me think. So thanks for letting me share. I'll jump back out again because I'm kind of perusing and looking through the rest of the chapter. And um, Wayne Dyer goes on to say, you know, uh, he says, try to imagine what it must have been like for this divine avatar to walk among his people in ancient China. He takes incredulous notes of their warlike behaviors, all the while having an internal awareness of what was possible for all of his fellow human beings if they would only change the way they looked at their lives. Freedom, peace of mind, contentment, and virtually every, every other principle that I've described in these 81 essays were only a thought away. I can imagine that some 500 plus years later, Jesus of Nazareth might have felt the same sentiment that Luce Tao expressed here in the verse 70, something to the fact this is oh so easy, so simple to understand, to practice, yet so few are willing to, or able to grasp the essence of heaven on earth. So I think, you know, he's realizing, you know, as he's looking around that even though he might have been teaching people, showing people, it still hasn't got, you know, like even now, you know, a lot of people talk about wanting peace and wanting understanding and wanting, you know, that to spread over. But yet we're so caught up in our ego because he does go on to talk about, you know, that um, Lustau was, you know, wasn't saying anything to have his ego massaged. He was really just, and he probably was really frustrated with that. Nobody was really getting what he was trying to get out there to, so people could live. And as he calls it later in the book, God realized life, you know, that very centered, that very balanced life. And I think, you know, for any of us, even for us here on talking here and how we've grown in, you know, ourselves, there are times when we look at people and just say, you just don't get it, do you? You just, you know, and I think that's part of what, you know, this is, is him kind of venting a little bit of the frustration of what he was seeing and dealing with. <clears throat> Going through and trying to share his, you know, what he's learned and discovered through the course of his growth and his studying the, the Tao. Hey, Dan, I really appreciate you sharing because I have to admit, I don't even have the book. So I have no access to the chapter that you're talking about. I just only look at the verse and uh, share what I can. So I appreciate having all that. I guess it's, it's Wayne D D Dyer's words, Dyer's words. So I appreciate having a, a fuller picture behind the verse. For me, the um, I really related to the people have no knowledge of this, therefore they have no knowledge of me. Um, my words have an ancestor, my deeds have a Lord. To me, he's referring to his knowledge coming from God. Um, and a lot of people don't have that connection with God, like they're just kind of going through the motions of life. And um, as someone who lived a very different life because of my early out-of-body experiences, um, I can completely relate because there's no way to relay that experience to someone else unless they've had it themselves. And there are so many um, repercussions of that experience. There's so many different ways that you look at things. And if somebody hasn't experienced that, they just don't, they don't understand you. And um, I don't know if it's frustration or just really a deep, deep sorrow of 
feeling like nobody really ever gets you. <laughs> but, um, and of course, the last, you know, this is why the sage dresses plainly. They, um, there's a lot of things that just go unsaid because you feel like people aren't going to understand it. Kind of like you said, Dan, you just don't get it. <laughs> so like, what's the point of going through a five minute talk about it, you know, but, um, I've seen sages that put their precious gems on the outside um, or people who present themselves as sages, I should say, <laughs> that put their precious gems on the outside. And uh, there's definitely a different feel about those than there is about just the, you know, very humble, almost monk-like expression. Seems like you know the when you lose it doesn't really matter what you dress like. It, it, you don't have to present to anyone, and uh, those that do are. Although you know, I I'm famous for working with personality colors, so there are different definitely different personality colors that you know one dresses really more bright and vibrant and the other dresses more plainly and the one that dresses plainly happens to be the one that a monk or a priest or a sage type personality would also fit into you know that would be a yellow personality and they would dress very plainly so but anyway i get the i get what he's saying here in the verse because you don't have to um and mo most of the sages don't want to be drawing more attention to them because they get kind of tired of talking to the people, you know, that don't understand. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, I was uh, reminded when you were talking about the, the fact that, um, you know, he probably feels a, a deep sorrow for the people who don't understand. And, um, my husband likes watching these shows on television that are like um, doomsday preppers or deep Alaskan survivors or homesteaders or, you know, kind of shows like that. And some of them are really interesting, but other ones, there was this one that was like a, um, <clears throat> they were trying to, I don't even know what the premise of the show was, but it was basically they took people from everyday existence in our generation and tried to see if they could survive a life of like the, the wild west, like a, a family that decided it was going to move out into the wild west from like, you know, the city. And of course, everything they did, I thought was ridiculous because it really didn't make any sense in the real grand scheme of things. But needless to say, one of the things that these families had to do was wear plain clothes and go without makeup and, and do things that frontier families would have had to have done as far as their, you know, personal hygiene and, and all these kinds of things. And, and um, this one part on there, they were interviewing this family and, and the mother of this family was struggling so hard with the fact that she was not allowed to wear makeup. And it was, like it was painful for her i mean emotionally she was crying it was like this, this torture for her to not to be able to wear makeup like that was her identity like somehow if she didn't wear makeup that there was something wrong i i'm not i i, I have to be honest i'm not even entirely sure what the why she was up, so upset about it because i've you know just not ever been a big makeup person but it was it was like part of part of her that she was it was like she was getting her heart torn out because she couldn't wear makeup and I had so much just outpouring of emotions towards her knowing that this is just the surface thing that she was struggling with so much and if she could just connect with these things that we teach on here that we talk about that that wouldn't even be an issue and 
it was, it was painful. <laughs> it was just painful watching her struggle through that. And, um, you know, working in the, this, uh, the job that I have right now, which is in a retail store, I see a lot of these folks that are so focused on their outward appearances and it is, it, it's painful to see some of these young women that put so much importance on that. And it, it when I know there's just a, there's a better way, you know, and it's just so I can completely relate to that, um, you know, that emotional outpouring of um, empathy, I guess, towards folks that, that struggle with those things. So, you know, I get that. How sad that she would not be comfortable in her own skin, you know, but like you said, there's so many that are like that. That's, that's probably a very, I mean, believe it or not, that's probably a very common, would be a very common experience with other women being put in that situation. Well, I think it goes back to kind of like what society and how um, society as a whole, for men and women both, because we both have expectations and things, you know, that we're expected to live up to. And if you don't follow into that, you actually kind of get looked down upon or put down or stuff like that. And I think that's the other part that Lou Stow was getting to is, you know, um, to find that true peace you have to really be able to be comfortable within yourself of who you are and in that um, connection with the divine, you know, however you look at it for me, I call it God, you know, he call it, you know, um, uh, you know, the Tao and stuff like that. But the premise is, I think, kind of the same. You're looking for that connection and that oneness to where, um, look at a lot, like Catherine said, you know, looking at a lot of the people, the ones that we tend to focus in on and uh, really admire, look up to are the ones like, you know, um, Mother Teresa or Gandhi or people or Martin Luther or people like that who, you know, really didn't try to, you know, put their stuff out there for people to see. They went and just did it because that's who they are and what they were about and let the rest take care of itself, so to speak, and dealt with it when they needed to, but, you know, just kind of went back. And that's where we see the real gem is what, you know, the beauty of what is really can and be inside somebody and be a part of somebody um, with that, you know, and, I think that's something we're all striving for. Um, I know I, it's weird. I love attention, but I hate attention when it's kind of gets put on me. It's weird. I don't, I don't fully understand it myself, you know, but you know, and I know part of that's my ego part, but then the other part is me. No, I just rather, you know, do what I would need to do and do what I want to do, you know, and share and give what I have to give, you know, because that's part of who I am. So in that, I think, you know, that's, I think a lot of what he's trying to get at here is he, he didn't do anything for, you know, the, you know, Oh, look at me. I'm so he just did it because he really got to that level, that transcendent level. I think that we all want to get to, but he lived it here on earth, you know, and tried to share it and teach others how to understand and be there. And that's gotta be really frustrating. <laughs> I mean, it would be for me. Yeah, those are some really good points, Dan. I, I think that that's exactly right as far as this, uh, his verse about, you know, how his teachings are very easy to understand and very easy to practice, yet so few in this world understand and so few are able to practice. And it, I mean, it seems like we're all, we, you know, we're, as we as we grow up we're we get to grow accustomed to certain things and having importance uh placed upon certain things and 
to understand the teachings of uh, of Lao Tzu is is to sort of discard all that and um, to to look within or look beyond what we see um, and what our senses can you know tell us. Um, I mean, essentially, he's telling us there's a lot of, of, there's a lot out there that is beyond what we understand initially. And, uh, you know, it could be that our teachings that we receive as we grow up are, um, are actually hindering us from, from being able to be open to uh, a greater source. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. I think that um, being open to that greater source is it's the key and in, in having that connection, you know, but I, in my experience, I think that most people are taught that we're separate from instead of one with. And, and that's where the difficulty lies is when we think we're separate and we have to do all this outward stuff in order to feel connected or feel what's the word I'm looking for accepted maybe and but if we can connect with that inner source with the Tao with God with our inner greatness whatever it is then all of that outward stuff just becomes a moot point you know <laughs> I don't know I mean but yeah you know like Dan was saying at the beginning we have all these societal expectations and we are humans and we live in this human world and therefore we we have to find a way to live in this human world in a way that um, we can all get along and connect with each other and all of that and so it's it's interesting that we kind of have to know dance on that kind of fine line in between working with everyone else in the world on a human level and also realizing that we're deeply connected on a god-like level and so i think that when we can do that of course we can have compassion for those who have not been able to figure out how to be connected and realize that they only know how to act from ego and ego requires so much <laughs> you know? and um so i think that's kind of the key are you awake now chris we've been wondering about you <laughs> yeah i'm here <laughs> yeah the uh it also dawned on me that, you know, I mean, as wise as Lao Tzu is, um, you know, maybe he would have been, maybe it would have been easier to spread that which he was teaching if he had realized how important it is for us to, um, how, how much we enjoy imagery and how much um, sight and sound is, is important to us. And, you know, maybe he, by dressing a little more flashy, maybe he could have drawn more people into, you know, and showed them, well, hey, this is how I dress here to, you know, attract, but this is what it's all about. This is what it's really all about and the underlying importance of, of uh, you know, his teachings, you know, so. But I just thought that was interesting with his, uh, you know, I was wondering why they, they dressed so plainly as a, as a choice. I, and I kind of just thought that, well, maybe that was to sort of seem benign and, and, and less of a threat. And, um, because they lived in a very tumultuous, uh, time where, you know, people were killing people all the time and there were no laws and pretty much from what I understand, I mean, it was like, you know, the wild west and people got away with stuff. So, I mean, they had to protect themselves and also lie low and, and, you know, I mean, who, who knows what their, you know, ultimate concerns were, but obviously their, their understanding of, of the world brought, brought them to appreciate simplicity, um, I guess, sort of an understanding that, that, you know, no matter how elaborate and um, 
you know, majestic you try to make yourself seem, it can never, you're, you're never, you're never more beautiful than the, the, the nature and the universe that's around you, never more amazing than that. But at the same time, you are of it. You are part of it. You are created from it. And so we're all you know, just as amazing and beautiful. So it's, it's uh, very interesting stuff. I was going to go back to what Catherine said because I really struck a note with me, Catherine, about that you took it that when pe the pe people have no knowledge of this and they have no knowledge of me, that that made you think of God. Because just yesterday I listened to um, a very long video of an interview of someone who's considered uh, a spiritual teacher. And it just thrilled me. It just filled me inside of like happiness and joy and optimism about our life and our world right now because we are going through really, uh, we're going through higher vibrations and dimensions and things are changing here on earth and we are changing. And I've mentioned this before. And so in that sense, if people want to tap into that, that having knowledge of that, uh, paying attention to that, understanding that, um, practicing that, you know, I think people, my thought was that people would be feeling the way I did yesterday, you know, because I truly was exhilarated. I, I started thinking about, wow, I, I'm really filled with happiness and joy. And this interview that I listened to for, it was like almost an hour and a half was just really, um, uplifting and made me feel really vibrant and so you, what you said Catherine just made me remember that and I'm looking at this verse and I'm thinking that's what's happening today I mean it was happening then when he wrote it but the whole point really is that if we all wake up which is what what, what you know paying attention to teachings uh, understanding practicing that's called waking up. I mean, that's just, are you woke or you're not woke? <laughs> you know? And especially now, because things are happening so fast, we're, we're truly evolving. And so in that sense, you know, I'm loving this verse even more. So thanks for letting me, letting me share. That's great, Marjorie. You know, I think part of, of the issue with waking up and uh, stepping into a new understanding is that uh, that understanding is kind of within us and we're still surrounded by the old knowledge and the old understanding and we, we have to kind of fall back into that um, inevitably um, and learn to bring this knowledge and this understanding and act upon it within this this other environment. So, I mean, it's very easy to get pulled and drawn apart and, uh, and really, um, you know, really kind of have to step away from it all at sometimes, uh, just to, just to get a, a perspective of now two perspectives and, and you know, as, uh, you know, we're all trying to understand ourselves better, but also st understand the world better. And, uh, and when we find new knowledge that we think is applicable, we, we want to be able to utilize it. It, always, it doesn't seem to always mesh, though, with what's going on. So we see, we also, we'll see that pullback and that, that push against it. Um, but maybe that's where he's talking about those that, uh, those, well, as uh, Wayne Dyer says, uh, thought this was interesting too, that, that he, re he was rereading more than 50 interpretations. So this is obviously, you know, there's a lot that can be said about this verse, but that uh, he said that Thomas Cleary's was saying that those, uh, those who know me are rare, his version, 
of that first part was those who know me are rare and those who emulate me are noble. And maybe what he's getting at is that, you know, we have, there is that push and, and pull in the environment as we try to implement these things. And if you really put effort into uh, taking action on it, then um, he considers you noble. Maybe that's it, what he means by that though. So anyway, <laughs> but I really liked what you said, Marjorie. And you too, Dan, earlier. Earlier, you mentioned um, uh, visual, you know, visualizing and hearing and, and that sort of thing at, at one point in the conversation. <clears throat> and um, at the end of this chapter, Wayne is kind of trying to sum things up for us on how to live in a God-realized way. And he, he says in here, to, um, to seek the invisible force of God in everything you see and hear. And he said, in the 14th century, Meister Eckhart offered some advice on how to put the 70th verse of the Tao Te Ching into daily life. And he says, what is the test that you have indeed undergone this holy birth or awakening? Listen carefully. If this birth has truly taken place within you, then every single creature points you toward God. He further advised, if the only prayer you said in your whole life was thank you, that would suffice. Practice saying thank you, God, for everything. This is the way to God realization. And I'm reminded of how, you know, when I feel most at peace, when I have the most connection to the source within me flowing through me as when I'm simply sitting anywhere and I feel the breeze blowing or I hear the water trickling outside or the birds chirping or I can look at the trees and the winds blowing the leaves and I can see the amazing wonder of all of it and how all of it fits together. And, and then if you look even deeper, if you were to look in through a microscope, it's just to look down and down and down and, and the microscopic sizes of how amazing and wonderful. And we, if we think about how we're all made and we think about how everything works together and, and all of those different things, if we feel, if we see the visual aspect of it, if we feel the emotional aspect of all of that and we hear all of it, it's just, that in and of itself is where you can feel and see and experience God. And I think that we're so caught up so much of the time in all the minutia that, that comprises our lives, all of the everything that's going on is that we stop, we forget to stop and smell the roses, if you will. <clears throat> but it's in those moments of just being in the here and the now in this very moment and experiencing everything that is is when you have that kind of connection with god with the universe with everything and that's where the peace is that's where our tranquility is that's where everything is and um <clears throat> i think that uh, i think that's kind of the the biggest thing he's trying to communicate here and throughout this whole book all of these verses it's it's kind of the same thing he's just trying to communicate look it's right there it's right in front of you all you have to do is stop and look and quit being so hurried quit <laughs> quit worrying so much you know just these silly things is just be right here and right now and experience that chris did you have something you, you want to add i saw you unmuted yeah sure <laughs> Jump out. I, I was going to say that um yeah, you were talking about experiencing God in kind of a universal way, you know, and um, I remember reading about Taoism and Tao Te Ching like quite a while ago, and um, it, it was the first thing that sort of attracted me into spirituality separate from the the lutheran upbringing that i had and it it was like the thing that 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 attracted me was was the idea of spirituality and the thing that it was it was like universal you know it, it was it's it's kind of like you know so i i find it interesting that he says lord lord here you know that's almost like an interesting term because we don't we don't really see 
much of Lao Tzu talking about a personal tradition as such, you know, in the formal sense of the word. There isn't like a religion in general coming from Lao Tzu's teachings. And also we, we do not, um, it, it has, um, you know, but you were talking about God in the universal sense, which is, you know, kind of how I see it too. You know, I mean, depending on if you have a personal or universal relationship or both or whatever. But, you know, Lao Tzu te- seems to speak very much in a, in a universal sense. And that was one of the things that kind of attracted to me. Um, um, his teachings at first, because I liked the idea of spirituality as this universally approachable thing rather than a, a dogmatic religious thing. I, I'm, I can jump out and say for me, in some ways, having gone to this book as, as much as I've been on, you know, part of the stuff and everything, it has helped augment and add to what my beliefs are and bring out certain elements and things, I think, to help enhance and give me a better understanding and to make it easier to uh, connect uh, for me, you know, with God or the universe, infinite intelligence, however we all want to call it. But um, I also agree with you. I, I, you know, there have been times where I have, like you did, you know, I've stopped and just looked around and, you know, took in the awe and wonder and the beauty and everything. And it was, you know, it just kind of brought me back to my core and just kind of really made me realize the, you know, how beautiful the creation that was created is out there from here to the smallest insect to the whole expanse of the universe, you know, just all that. And here I am just a little speck on it, but yet I'm just as an important speck in this whole creation, you know, that there is a place and point and purpose to what I'm all about. And I think that's where, you know, where I found, you know, that real peace, it kind of gave me a sense of clarity a little bit for a little bit of time where I just like, wow, okay, I don't really have to know it all. I don't need to know it. Just, you know, experience, connect, appreciate, be thankful. And I didn't need to do anything else. And that's where I just felt really at one, you know, and I think that's, you know, if we were to do that more, we might have better way of espousing a lot of what he talks about here and espousing whatever we are meant to do on this earth. And I think you now I'd like to be able to do that more. It's just finding the time to do it. I haven't heard from you much, Karen. What are you thinking? Are you there? Well, those who are not privy to the uh, chat won't understand what I'm saying here, but I did look up. I noticed that there were lots of birds on my own ceiling. I've been counting. I've been quite, quite busy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, I think it was, uh, I think it was Chris who was referring to my deeds have a Lord and commenting. We lost you, Karen. I hear you. Looks like you're still unmuted though. You lose your microphone. Hmm. I don't know. We lost you. All right, somebody else jump out, and then uh, when Karen gets back on, then we'll we'll hear. I'll jump out real quick, uh, Samantha. I really appreciate what you were saying earlier about uh, 
uh, seeing, uh, seeing God in nature and spirit out spirit, spirituality in, in nature as well. And, um, appreciate that. What, uh, Chris was saying too, and, and drawing that, uh, uh, drawing that out. Um, there is definitely that, um, <clears throat> there is for, for me, I, you know, uh, I've always long been a, um, a nature lover, uh, grew up really appreciating nature, the woods and, uh, uh, bird watching and, uh, fishing and, and, um, you know, animals in general and, um, just really appreciating the, the wonder of how, you know, what we need to sustain, to sustain ourselves is, is here for us on this planet. Um, but as I've, I've grown up and there is less time to, you know, to, to do all these things that we'd like to do, as Dan suggested, um, you know, just, just hearing the birds in the morning, uh, even though they might wake me up, uh, you know, um, I'm thankful and I'm grateful and, um, because I do, I see, uh, I see God in, in all of nature and, uh, all of, uh, all of its wonderment, um, you know, it's, uh, it can be, cons the study of it can be considered a science and some people are, are against science maybe if they're in, you know, uh, deep into religion, but it's, um, you can't deny the, the, uh, just the, uh, the amazing features and amazing, um, abilities and, and, uh, how, how, how life on this planet just seems to just, it has so much vigor and, and it will uh, it will fight um, to survive on its own means whether we whether we help it or not um, it's it's out there and and I too uh, you know can look and see in the see the you know the winds blowing through the trees and see the, see life all around me and um, just I appreciate it so much and you know and the and the I hope that others can can do that too and uh, it's also true that I, that, you know, as I'm feeling grateful for all the things, uh, in nature and, and just sitting, being grateful and saying, you know, saying thank you and recognizing that there is a, a higher, uh, spiritual presence or source out there that, you know, that, uh, you know, really needs, uh, uh, well, it really doesn't need anything from us, but um, it's nice to uh, it's nice to know it's there, and and I really do feel the best when I'm when I'm appreciative of it, and uh, and uh, and when I'm around others uh, such as yourselves who who are also open to that and and appreciative of it. So uh, I want to thank you again for allowing me to be here, and it's so wonderful to be part of this group. Um, I appreciate you all. I did not, wasn't able to comment on everybody's, what everybody said, but it was all, all really great stuff. So thank you. And uh, have a great weekend, everybody. I was just going to say, it's Marjorie speaking. Um, I'm into astrology. I've been studying it for decades and the sun is in my ninth house. You know, the sun travels you know, month to month in different signs and you have 12 houses that kind of match up with 12 months and it's in my ninth house. It's the house where you're interested in higher learning. And for me, that's always represented spirituality. So I just noticed that the other day, oh, the sun's in my ninth house and it's going to last there for, you know, maybe I think the end of May, if I remember. And so I was just thinking, I was laughing at myself because besides joining this group every Saturday and getting a chance to share on a deep level, you know, based on these verses, like in the last few days, I, I maybe three days, I've already listened to the, the uh, one and a half interview I mentioned that I saw the other day that was so inspiring. And then I also tapped into uh, a weekly vlog of a spiritual teacher that was talking about how to really a way to set each day with an intention to monitor your thoughts and then a process to actually clear out the thoughts that weren't for your highest good by blazing the violet flame um, with God's perfect, God's infinite perfection 
through those thoughts that were not for your highest good, those thoughts and feelings. And, and then the other, the other was, uh, uh, was checking in just yesterday with a free masterclass on a woman who's considered a world expert on energy medicine and someone who knows the nine can see, you know, nine, your nine energy bodies. And I was thinking, wow, I'm really packing it all in. <laughs> and uh, so today's verse really is making me go back and, and kind of pulling it all together that, um, that, that this is called seeking. This is, this is waking up and paying attention. This is, this is seeing life on a higher level and perspective, which, is, which just thrills me. And uh, so I do appreciate this group having this you know, opportunity because very few people do this. And yet, while my, you know, looking for guidance and truth, this is like the most important thing we could be doing, uh, the interior work. Otherwise, everything else is just, the, you know, the, your regular little routine that's not very inspiring necessarily, though we want to, as Catherine has mentioned to me, I take that to heart. You do want to live every moment of your so-called regular life with that spirituality and that exuberance and that perspective, like Chris, like uh, Jason is saying, you know, seeing the beauty in nature and the wind and such. And I, and I do, I love seeing the wind move, the tree branches and the trees and, you know, that's seeing mother nature like that is really great so anyway it's just something i've been going through and the more and more i seek i know this is the truth is that we are really vibrant divine divine spiritual souls and spirits we're, we're electrical we're we're magnets we're vibration and we're all connected every single thing matters um and only we can make the world what it is we, well we design the world <laughs> from our thoughts and our feelings and our actions and so if we all make that effort to be better to be at a higher level a more positive level and have that intention of changing and creating and moving ourselves and everybody in our world to something totally beautiful that was meant to be we will be there and the thing that really moved me uh the hour and a half interview i, I mentioned he he said that we have succeeded, that we've already done it, that we, 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 we have created this beautiful world and it's there. Uh, we don't see it literally in front of us yet, but we're on the path and we've already passed some major hurdles. So I just wanted to share that. And I guess I'm a big Beatles fan. I love George Harrison. And I, one of the things he said, I saw this uh, repeated from an interview he had, he'd, he'd conducted where he says, there's nothing more important than to know God. And I take that to heart. We need to know God, whatever you want to call God, divine creator. You know, um, that's what I really believe. And if you don't understand that, then we're just going kind of going through the motions in this lifetime. And so that's not, not a way we want to spend this particular lifetime. Because right now here on earth, we are really going through major, major changes. This is, this is like the utmost. This is like the Olympics. <laughs> You're in the finals. So anyway, thank you for listening. Oh, thanks for sharing that, Marjorie. So, guys, we're at the top of the hour. Um, does anybody want to share some final thoughts before we wrap up for today? Yeah, I just want to say that I do. Oh my gosh, I do. Um, sorry, guys. Let me... How do I say this? Like, I too live in the now, and I see that everything all the time. That, and that's where I prefer to be. That's the space that I enjoy the most vilest of vile or what we would consider to be the most vilest of vile is God too. And knowing that there's no judgment, it's interesting to see the spiritual teachers and gurus 
um, only praising certain behaviors <laughs> and encouraging certain behaviors. Um, it is, you know, like we said before, the, the girl that, you know, wasn't comfortable in her own skin, those people that are fighting for survival on a daily basis, even if they're not in a survival environment, you know, like I'm talking about, just watch one of these, um, oh, like, uh, you know, one of these cop shows that they have where they, the whole show is just about cops and different things that they deal with every day. If you look at one of those shows and you see that that survival place that that people are in i mean it it brings even more compassion because they are not experiencing heaven on earth i may be and that's all good you know but there's a lot of people out there that aren't they're experiencing hell on earth and to think that they're just magically going to wake up one day is somebody's been doing a little bit too much uh something <laughs> you know i mean it, i i hang out with a lot of quote highly spiritual people and stuff but we have to realize that there's there's a there's an element here on earth there's a polarity um that there's a lot of people that are nowhere even near um, experiencing heaven on earth. And it's interesting because I hear sages say, oh, well, you know, those people are just going to drop away or they're going to, they're going to die or they're going to whatever, because they're not on our vibrational level or whatever. That's all a bunch of bullshit. You guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we are all God in every expression, whether we want to accept that or not. I guess I should hush now. That's my final thought. <laughs> well, Catherine, just... I was going to say, oh, sorry, it's Marjorie. I just want to quickly say that was that concept, we are one. We're all connected. Uh, so, so, every single one of us matters and every single one of us is connected to all the rest of us so we all rise up that's that's what i want so anyway thank you i was just gonna do my last little bit um i think for me um i'm so appreciating everything that everybody said and it helps me kind of look at things from a different perspective but i also i'm going to go back to what um you know Wayne Dyer talks about, and in the end, you know, he talks about at, towards the end of the chapter um, to just remember to thank, be thankful and grateful for God and everything that he's done, and to just in those moments that we have where we are appreciating, you know, everything and stuff like that, just be thankful and let that suffice. You know, don't have to go into anything elaborate or anything more or anything. Um, and for me, I think it's just that simplicity along like with what he's talking about in the Tao, the simplicity of, you know, finding, you know, getting rid of the ego and just finding that centeredness of connecting with, you know, God, the universe, uh, however you put it, you know, and going forth out of that. I think that's what I'm wanting to work towards more and try and achieve even though I've got a long ways to go. I, I know I do. So, um, like I said, uh, I'm appreciating this book a lot. God showed me three times this week why I do not have instant manifestation powers. <laughs> 
seriously, because, you know, I don't know if you guys get, I, I know like not everybody gets your posts on Facebook and stuff, but there's actually a place here in the United States, in Minnesota, where it's a place that has wolves and they, it's like a petting zoo for wolves, but then they kill them and skin them and sell their pelts. And if I had instant manifestation skills, I mean, it would have been like an immediate lightning bolt spam. That person would be gone off the face of the earth, like a pile of dust, <laughs> you know? So, um, but I have to realize that's God too. And learn how to deal with that. Um, so I really, really agree with, that it's maybe easy to understand, but very difficult to practice. Great point, great, great point. Thanks, Catherine. Um, I also wanna do a shout out to Samantha for doing some great work on our, uh, our group uh, and Facebook and also Ooh. the website. Um, I saw the, uh, the resources you posted there too, with, uh, some of the, the great books and stuff we were interested in. So that's awesome. That's a great, great resource for everybody. And I hope, uh, hope if you're listening, uh, you're able to find us on Facebook and also go to the morning, uh, uh, mastery collective, um, and, uh, just, uh, write us a little note and, uh, join us next weekend. We're usually on every weekend. So so thanks a lot, Samantha, for for everything you do. You too, Catherine. <laughs> thank you. Yes, That's right. Thank we you. wouldn't be here without Catherine, I'll tell you. <laughs> yes. We appreciate you so very much, Catherine. I, I appreciate you immensely. <clears throat> For everything that you do as well and but thank you Jason I appreciate that it was a long time coming getting me to do anything else on Facebook so <clears throat> jump out Chris you know I see you wanted to say something well thanks y'all I appreciate it sorry I drifted off for a couple minutes there it's the first time I ever did that sorry that's about okay that. you gave us quite a chuckle <laughs> good <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I wanted to piggyback off what you're saying, Catherine, uh, about we are, everything is God. You know, it was, um, throughout this book, we're taught about letting go of expectations and, um, you know, and allowing. Those are kind of like two of the key things. And when we look at nature, we see in nature that nature has, there is no right or wrong in nature. You know, I mean, animals kill each other all the time. Swarms come in and eat trees and, and crops and everything else all the time. Storms come through and blow things down like they're nothing. And when we, we like to sit here and say, well, that's evil. And, and there's all this, this bad stuff happening in the world. And, and um, you know, but when we can let go of what we think is right and what we think is wrong, that would create a peace within ourselves that allows us to live and be ourselves and not worry about what everybody else is doing, not worry about what the rest of the world is doing. Now that's not without having empathy for people that we see they're in pain, but it can help us let go of some of what we, we think we're so worried about. Like the, the woman who was so worried about, you know, not wearing makeup and, if she could let go of what she thinks everybody else is expecting of her about what is right or what is wrong, then she would have more peace in her life. And, you know, and I think that's, that's kind of the thing is that, that, you know, if we look at nature, we see there, there isn't one way or another way that is better than another. It all happens. It's all just is. And I think that's part of the key right there is just to realize it's not one way or another. It just is. And when we can live within what is, then we have more peace within our lives. So that's kind of my final thought. But. Well said. 
Thanks, everybody. I appreciate your time this week. It's been a wonderful chat. I love learning from each of you. And hopefully Karen is okay. I hope that maybe she, maybe she had a power fluctuations or lost her power or something. I don't know. She's never fallen off like that before. But I've got a storm rolling in here, so <laughs> we got to end this before we have a power fluctuation. But for those of you guys who are watching out there, that you'll be seeing this as a recording on YouTube. There's going to be a link below the video where you can connect with us in Facebook because we have a new Facebook group that I started a couple, I don't know, a few months back. And we'd love to have you in there. And, of course, you can see, you can meet with us every week at SaturdayMorningMastermind.com. And, or you can see all of our recordings at SaturdayMorningMastermind.com and at Zoom.SaturdayMorningMastermind.com. You'll find instructions for joining us weekly at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific uh, to participate in this Saturday Morning Mastermind. So with that, guys, have a great, awesome, and amazing weekend, and we'll see you next week on the Saturday Morning Mastermind. Bye for now.